Have you ever wondered why sometimes a chemical reaction might be slow but other times the same chemical reaction might be fast? In this video I'm going to be discussing two different factors that can change the speed of a chemical reaction. I'm going to answer the question about what can change the speed of a chemical reaction using a format called CER, which stands for Claim, Evidence, Reasoning. Let's start with the claim. Chemical reactions go faster when temperatures or reactant concentrations are increased. To defend this claim, we'll start by identifying evidence that supports our claim. The evidence should show patterns of what happens to the speed of a reaction as the temperature changes or concentration of reactants are changed. By using patterns, we can determine what underlying scientific principles cause a phenomena to occur. Let's take a look at a simple reaction that takes place when an effervescent antacid tablet is dropped into water. Antacid tablets are made using sodium bicarbonate and citric acid, which can react when the tablet is dropped into water producing carbon dioxide gas. In this lab clip, tablets were dropped into two beakers of water. The left beaker held water at 20 degrees Celsius and the right beaker was filled with water at 80 degrees Celsius. The reaction in the warmer water is visibly more vigorous and stops bubbling sooner, meaning that the reaction is completed more quickly because of a higher reaction rate. We can also use patterns from graphs to help us understand the relationship of temperature and reaction rate. On this graph, we see that temperature is the independent variable placed on the x-axis, and reaction rate is the dependent variable placed on the y-axis. The graph shows that low temperatures are associated with a slower rate of reaction and that higher temperatures will cause reactions to have faster rates. This pattern on the graph agrees with what we observed when the effervescent antacid tablet dropped into warmer water and it reacted more quickly than the tablet dropped into colder water. But can reactions go infinitely faster as long as we keep increasing the temperature? The answer is no. The second graph shows an enzyme-catalyzed reaction. This means that a chemical reaction is assisted by protein molecules called enzymes. The ability of enzymes to catalyze a reaction increases as temperature goes up, as long as the temperature doesn't get too hot, which causes the enzyme to denature. That means the shape of the enzyme becomes altered, making it unable to do its job anymore. I've added a link to a video playlist about enzymes if you want to learn more about them. In this next clip, we'll examine data from an experiment performed by adding a solution of sodium thiosulfate, Na2S2O3, into a beaker and then adding hydrochloric acid, HCl. The reaction observed in this experiment produces a solid precipitate that makes the water become cloudy. The reaction is said to be finished when a printed X on paper under the reaction beaker can no longer be seen due to the precipitate forming. The first trial is run with a one-fifth dilution of Na2S2O3 and takes over 70 seconds until it's done. The second trial is run using a more highly concentrated two-fifths dilution of Na2S2O3, which finishes in a little over 30 seconds. Let's take a closer look at the data from this experiment. In the first column, we see beakers one through five. These were the five trials for the experiment. Notice that the amount of Na2S2O3 increases in each trial, while the amount of added water decreases. This was to have the same total volume of liquid in the five trials, while giving different concentrations of sodium thiosulfate. The concentration of the Na2S2O3 ranged from 0.03 molar, 0.03 m, in the first trial to 0.15 molar in the fifth trial. Here, a graph comparing reaction rate, dependent variable, versus concentration, the independent variable, shows a decreasing curve. Trials with lower concentration of Na2S2O3 have a longer reaction time, meaning the reaction was slower. Trials with higher reactant concentration proceeded much more quickly and had a shorter reaction time as a result. This curve of the graph suggests that there would be an upper limit to the rate for this reaction, since we can see the curve flattening out in a manner which would not allow it to ever reach a reaction time of zero seconds. When comparing the dependent variable of reaction rate, 1 over s, with the independent variable of concentration, we see a linear pattern. 
with the rate of reaction increasing with increasing concentration. Low concentrations produce lower reaction rates, and higher concentrations produce higher reaction rates. So observations of the two experiments and analysis of the graphs shows us that reactions do happen more quickly when temperatures and concentration of reactants are higher. But why is this the case? To answer this question, we will apply collision theory and kinetic molecular theory. These are the scientific principles we will use for our reasoning section. To explain collision theory, let's look at the reaction that happens when hydrogen, H2 molecules, shown in white, combine with oxygen, O2 molecules, shown in red, to form water, H2O. The demonstration shows hydrogen gas being produced in a test tube by the reaction of magnesium with hydrochloric acid. When a glowing wood splint is inserted into the test tube, the hydrogen ignites by reacting with oxygen. Since chemical reactions involve the breaking of existing chemical bonds and the formation of new chemical bonds, the hydrogen molecules must collide with oxygen molecules for a reaction to occur. The addition of heat increases the energy of those collisions, producing collisions which are called effective collisions since they produce a chemical reaction. So what I'm trying to say is that chemical reactions, like the one that happens between hydrogen and oxygen, are all about collisions. The reason my opening demonstration happened more quickly when the material was thrown through the flame was that the material was spread out, giving it a greater surface area, allowing for more collisions with oxygen molecules. So why does increasing temperature or concentration cause reactions to happen more quickly? Remember that chemical reactions depend on collisions, so it seems reasonable that anything we do that will increase the frequency and energy of collisions should make a reaction happen more quickly. Let's take a look at a computer model to help us understand what is happening at the molecular or particle level of a chemical reaction. I'll add a link in the description of the video to my website where you can run the simulation if you want to try it. In the first example, we see that the number of green enzymes and blue substrates has been set to equal amounts in the left and right reaction windows. Substrates are also called reactants, or starting materials. The temperature has been set to 5 in the left window and 25 in the right window. As you watch the simulation run, you can see that the right reaction window reaches 90% conversion of substrate to product much more quickly than the left reaction window. This happens because particles move more quickly in warmer conditions. Higher temperatures mean that the particles are moving faster, which will make them more likely to bump into each other and react. We can use this computer model to help us explain why the effervescent antacid tablet reacted more quickly in warm water. The particles in the warm water beaker were moving much more rapidly, which increased the frequency and energy of collisions between reactant particles. This made the reaction happen more quickly. In the second example, we see that the number of green enzymes is greater in the reaction window on the right. This allows for more collisions between blue substrates and the enzyme, which will convert these molecules to red products. We can see that the reaction on the right converts over 90% of the blue starting materials to red end products much more quickly. The higher concentration in the right window allows for more frequent collisions, which speed up the reaction process. Now, we can imagine the particles of Na2S2O3 and HCl colliding with each other with higher frequency in the trials with a higher concentration of sodium thiosulfate, which speeds up the chemical reaction. To sum up, reactions go faster when temperatures or concentration of reactants are raised. Increasing temperature increases reaction rate in the antacid tablet experiment, and increasing concentration increases reaction rate in the disappearing X experiment using sodium thiosulfate and hydrochloric acid. The enzyme races model was used to visualize how kinetic molecular theory and collision theory are used to explain the reason why reaction rate changes in the experiments. Increasing temperature or concentration caused the collisions between reactant particles to happen more frequently, leading to a faster speed for a chemical reaction. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this helpful.